Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. Today I am going to test Tinyue X99D8 server motherboard. This motherboard has two sockets for Intel LGA 2011 version 3 CPUs, which means that you can use Xeon E5 V3 and V4. The motherboard looks rather nice and it has lots of expansion options as well as quad-channel memory configuration for each CPU, which turns into 8 memory channels in total. What I like about this motherboard is that it is called X99 Server and not X99 Gaming. Dual socket solutions are designed for service and workstations. When you have two CPUs, memory latency is horrible and the gaming performance is awful. But before I go into the detailed technical specification and the test results, I would like to make a small notice. I know that there are a few foreign language websites which are collecting information from my videos and publishing on their web pages, but not adding a link to my videos or my YouTube channel. I spend lots of time and effort to collect this information and publish it for free on my YouTube channel, thus I would really appreciate if you would honor my work and add a link to my website, to my YouTube channel or to the video where you collect this information. Thanks a lot! Ok, now let's quickly go through the detailed specification of Tinyue X99D8 server motherboard. Here you will find two CPU sockets, one over here, one over here, for Xeon E5 2011 version 3 CPUs. E5, V3, V4 are supported. For each of the CPU you will find four DDR4 memory slots. These four are for the first CPU and these four are for the second CPU. Each CPU has full quad memory channel configuration, which means that in total this motherboard has 8 memory channels. In this configuration it doesn't matter which of the memory slots you are using first and which ones you are using later on, because each memory slot is connected to its own memory channel. For PCI Express expansions we have 5 slots. Three of them are PCI Express X16, this one is PCI Express X16 and this one is also PCI Express X16. And the last one has physical dimensions of PCI Express X16, but it is connected as PCI Express X8 only. Additionally, here are two PCI Express X1 slots, which are connected to the chipset. The chipset is located under this heatsink, and it is Intel C612 chipset. Next to the chipset heatsink, you will find the BIOS chip, which is located right over here. The location is not the best because you need to remove this heatsink to be able to connect the CH301 external clip to read or write the BIOS. Next to each PCI Express X1 slot you will find an M.2 slot and both of the M.2 slots are working in SATA and NVMe configurations. To enable or disable one of the configurations you need to use these mechanical switches or jumpers. In this position SATA mode is enabled, in this position NVMe mode is enabled. A part of the M.2 slots you also have 8 SATA 3 ports, which are located over here. For the front panel USB connectors we have one USB 3.0 header here and one USB 2.0 header over here. For the fan connectors we have two 4 pin connectors, one over here and one over here for the CPU fans and uh, two additional 3 pin fan connectors located at the corner of the motherboard right over here. 24 pin motherboard power is over here and on this side you will find two 8 pin CPU power connectors. Unfortunately on this motherboard even if you are using just one CPU you have to connect both of the 8 pin power connectors otherwise the motherboard doesn't work properly. Front audio connector is located over here, this location is a bit weird and first I didn't even find it but it's over here. On the back side or the I.O. side you will find two PS2 ports, two USB 2 ports, four USB 3.0 ports, two Ethernet ports. Both of these ports are connected to a Realtek RDL 8111 micro scheme. These audio exits are connected to Realtek ALC 662 audio codec. The audio quality with this codec is not to the best, but at least we're getting some source of audio on a server-like motherboard. So, according to the technical specification, Tinyue X99D8 seems to be a very decent server or workstation motherboard. Let's go through the test results and see if this motherboard is worth it or not. Starting with the SATA ports and USB 3 ports, as usual I have tested both using my SATA 3 SSD drives and external Samsung T5 USB 3.0 SSD drive. In case of Tinyue X99D8, the motherboard passed all the tests with no issues. Even under Crystal Disk Mark test through the USB port, the system did not hang and did not misbehave. Another common issue of the Chinese X99 motherboards is the PCI Express routing. On Tinyue X99D8 PCI Express routing works the following way. 
the first M.2 slot, the first PCI Express X16 slot, and the last PCI Express X16 slot are connected to the first CPU. Thus, if you're using only one CPU on the motherboard, the middle or the second PCI Express slot and the second M.2 slot are not gonna work because these are connected to the second CPU. So let's repeat it again. The first slot works as PCI Express X16 connected to the first CPU. The second slot works as PCI Express X16 connected to the second CPU. The last slot is connected to the first CPU, but it works as PCI Express X8. The first M.2 slot is working as PCI Express X4 connected to the first CPU, and the second M.2 slot is connected to the second CPU but also works as PCI Express X4, which means that on this motherboard you can install two M.2 drives, either SATA or NVMe. Of course, I have tested multiple different graphics cards with this motherboard, and my GTX 750, which does not have external power connector, also refuses to work any faster than PCI Express 1.1. I have no clue what's going on there, but if I install the graphics card into any of these three PCI Express X16 slots, the graphics card simply doesn't go any higher than PCI Express 1.1. I'm not sure if it is a motherboard issue, because if I'm using the NVIDIA GTX 960, then the graphics card is working as PCI Express 3.0 in all of these three PCI Express X16 slots. The PCI Express X1 slots, which are connected to the chipset, are also functioning properly. I have tested with my NVIDIA GT710 PCI Express X1 graphics card. The graphics card is detected by NVIDIA control panel, and it is possible to connect a secondary monitor. So far, so good, but now let's mention a few flaws or issues of TNUA X99D8. First of all, the motherboard does not have restore on AC power loss in the BIOS. It is a shame because the motherboard is designed to be used as a server or a workstation, and in these configurations, restore on AC power loss is very important. Another annoying issue is that clear CMOS doesn't work. On the motherboard you will find a removable battery over here and a clear CMOS jumper over here, but none of these are working to clear the BIOS values. If you try to tighten memory timings too tight and the motherboard doesn't boot, it turns into a brick and you have to use an external CH341A or another flash programmer to restore the motherboard BIOS. The motherboard also doesn't have functioning temperature sensors. Even though one of the temperature sensors on the motherboard is actually displaying some different values, I was not able to identify which exact temperature it is indicating, and the value is somehow obscured. It is displaying 12 to 45 degrees Celsius, while I have more than 20 degrees Celsius in my room. The fan configuration is not ideal either. In the BIOS you will find only one smart function configuration, which means you are not able to adjust fan speed rotation for both of the CPUs individually. The same configuration is applied for both of the four pin fan headers for this one and this one. Moreover, in HW monitor and other hardware monitoring software, one of the fans is recognized as CPU fan, another one is recognized as system fan. This means that the BIOS was not fully adopted to be used on a dual socket motherboard, which is also a shame. Rotation speed of 3-pin fans connected to these 3-pin fan headers is not possible to either monitor or control, basically like any other Chinese X79, X99 motherboard. TNUA X99 D8 motherboard also doesn't support sleep mode, and the power consumption sensors are working for the CPU only. Power consumption sensors for the memory modules are simply missing or not reported in HW monitor. These were the most important details about TNUA X99 D8 serial motherboard, so let's take a look at the VRM or power delivery system on the motherboard. The motherboard has two sockets, thus we have two identical VRMs on each side of the motherboard, one for one CPU, another one for another CPU. Unfortunately, TNUA uses the same cheap four-phase PWM controller on both of the sides, but only three phases are implemented onto the motherboard. Thus, we have four-phase controller, where we have only three phases in use, each phase has a doubler, and each doubler has two pairs of MOSFETs. Unlike other cheap Chinese motherboards such as Machinist X99 RS9 or Klisre X99 version 201, this TNUA X99 D8 uses slightly better MOSFETs which support slightly higher electrical current. Thus, it will be interesting to see what kind of temperatures I will get testing with my two E5 2690V3 Turbo Boost Unlocked with minus 70 50 50 millivolts voltage reduction. 
For the stress test I use ADA64 as usual and the test was running for about one hour before I took my thermometer to check the temperatures. On the CPU1 side, where the VRM was exposed to the better airflow and a better cooling, the maximum temperature I was able to register was about 65 degrees Celsius, which is a very good result. On the other side, where VRM was not cooled as good, and I have used another CPU cooler which was blowing hot air through the CPU cooler straight into the VRM zone, the VRM heated up to 85 degrees Celsius. Ideally, you need to keep your VRM temperatures under 70 degrees Celsius for constant load, because the VRM efficiency degrades with the increased temperatures and 85 degrees Celsius is not the safest temperature. Even though VRMs are designed to be able to work with up to 100 degrees Celsius, I still think it's not the best result. It is also important to mention that these two VRM radiators or heat sinks are mounted onto the motherboard using plastic clips. In my case, the clips were able to provide enough pressure to keep the radiators mounted well onto the motherboard and cool down the MOSFETs and the doublers, but over the time the plastic clips may lose the plastic capabilities or plastic properties and the pressure might not be good enough. In that case, you would have to use some sort of an off-the-market solution. For example, you can have some extra screws with nuts to be able to provide enough pressure between the VRM heatsink and the motherboard. All in all, the VRM is not the best, but it is kind enough to install CPUs such as a Xeon E5 2690V3. Still, you have to make sure to have good airflow and good cooling in your chassis, and this airflow must be implemented over both of the VRM zones. You can't cool just one VRM, you have to cool both of them. One on this side, another one on that side. Speaking of E5-2690V3, for Turbo Boost Unlock I have used S3 Turbo Tool, which works for dual socket configurations. I have also tried the Ultimate Patcher Tool, unfortunately though that one does not support dual socket biases, thus it was not possible to use it and I was left with S3 Turbo Tool. The original and the modified BIOS is available in Mi 899. As usual, I have also made a few different BIOS options with a different voltage reduction or with the different undervolting levels. Thus, if you would like to unlock Turbo Boost with your Team UAX 99D8 server motherboard, all you have to do is download Mi 899, select the motherboard, select the BIOS, flush the BIOS and enjoy. Also, I have tested different memory configurations and in particular I have got 64 gigs, 8 by 8 gigabytes, a normal desktop, non-registered, non-ECC memory. Four sticks were from Corsair and four sticks were from GSQ. In this configuration, in this configuration, both of the CPUs get four memory channels and we get eight memory channels in total. I have also tested my 32 gigs ECC registered memory modules. Sadly, I have only four of them, so each of the CPUs has got only two memory sticks, two memory channels per CPU, four memory channels in total. In this configuration, ECC mode is also functioning well, according to Postmark Memtest 86. Lastly, I have also tested my Xeon E5 2620V4 to make sure that the motherboard is compatible with the V4 Xeons. I cannot confirm if the motherboard would work with a V4 pair, but with my single V4 CPU it works properly fine. You have to install the CPU in the first socket, because if you install the CPU in the second socket, the motherboard refuses to start. With my E5 2620V4 I have also tested regular desktop as well as registered ECC memory. Using all four memory slots on this side, I'm getting quad-channel memory configuration, no issues were detected with the Xeon E5 2620V4. With these test results, it is possible to make a conclusion about TNUA X99 D8 server motherboard. Would I recommend this motherboard for a mission-critical device which is doing some mission-critical calculation? Definitely not. As any other Chinese X79 or X99 motherboard, this one is not designed to be used in mission-critical devices where you need 24-7 operation and a hardware failure may turn into a disaster. If you need a mission-critical device, you heavily rely on the hardware and you cannot afford a breakdown, then do not use these Chinese options. Use certified and supported hardware from known brands and known manufacturers. On the other hand, if you're looking for a cheap workstation or a home server which would be doing a non-mission-critical uh, calculations or workload loads, then Team UAX99D8 server might be a good option for you. 
Right now the motherboard can be bought from AliExpress for about 150 euros and I think this is kind of reasonable price. Of course we always want it to be cheaper, but the motherboard comes with the multiple expansion options, two M.2 slots, three PCI Express X16 slots, enough USB ports, enough SATA ports, audio on board and two CPU sockets, thus you can install two CPUs, at least 12 cores each and lots of memory. Of course the motherboard also has some downsides. The most critical ones is that clear CMOS doesn't work, sleep mode doesn't work, and restore on AC power loss is not available on this motherboard. All in all, because of these flaws, my score for the motherboard would be 6 out of 10. The motherboard is designed to be kinda like a server solution, but it doesn't have the server features. Thus, I can't give it a higher score. Still, as I have already said, if you need a cheap server with many cores and lots of RAM, for whatever reason, then this might be a solution for you. For now though, that's all I can tell about Tinua X99DA server motherboard. I hope it was interesting, I hope it was useful. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, goodbye.